We've heard stories of CEOs of organizations showing up unexpected at work and acting like an employee, only to find out later that somebody dissed their boss and had no idea. But this story this morning is in a context of sorrow and grieving and focus. This has been one of those weeks. With Richard's passing, it fills our mind and our bandwidth gets so full and we can't think about a whole lot else. But on Monday, I think it was, I received news. Remember last week I told you about my friend who had been in prison for 10 years for serving the Lord. I got news on Monday that he had passed away from the sicknesses that he obtained while living in prison. But even worse than that, they were trying to find a place to bury him and no cemetery would take him and the government officials were refusing any place for him to be buried either in the city or places beyond. Now you think that all of that persecution would have come from maybe Islamic world or something else, but the reality is the persecution was coming from other Christian groups that were willing to punish even to death those who worshiped different than he did because he was considered a born-again, rebaptized believer. Can't imagine it happening in 2023. These things fill my mind this week, and I could get focused, and you could walk right past me, and I may miss you. And I think that's sort of the context of what was going on with the disciples and those that were living at the time of this story. In Luke 24, we read these words, And Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and bending over, saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went, right away. And he went away, and these are the words that I think are relevant, wondering to himself, what has happened? Do you ever find yourself wondering what in the world just took place? Was that really real? I think last year I told you that I had been in Israel during Passover Easter one year and Sunday morning we were at the garden tomb for worship on Easter morning. And then a friend asked me, would you like to walk to the road to Emmaus, seven miles? At 19 I said, no, I'll do it some other time when I come back. That's I don't know how many years ago. But here are these two brothers, Cleophas. I'm wondering why there was no book in the Bible written by Cleophas. Really, I mean, he had the doctoral dissertation. The master himself told him from the very beginning from Moses, that would be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Do I have them all? I'm trying to... Uh, numbers. Numbers is the one I missed. I thought I missed one there. I was counting and I didn't even remember numbers. <laughs> Talk about focus. But here is a person who heard the whole story told by Jesus himself in the beginning. You know, back in Genesis, it was this. And then in Exodus, it was this. And in, in Numbers and Deuteronomy and all of those places, and it was this and that. And then there were the prophets. There was, you know, David considered to be a prophet. He even prophesied in Psalms.
And but Jesus said something that's sort of anti-scripture. It says, do not call anybody a fool, but didn't he say, how stupid are you? You know why? Can't you understand what is going on? And so he begins to tell the story. And this morning, because we had the opportunity to leave these tables up, I thought you all could help me finish my sermon. What do you think Jesus was talking about when he revealed to them the things from Moses? Another translation says the law, the Torah. What do you think Jesus talked about when he talked about the words that came from the prophets talking about the Messiah? And then I had another question. Did Jesus use the New Testament when he talked about these things? And then my fourth question, all of these are written on, your, on a piece of paper at your tables. Have you ever thought of a conversation, thought after a conversation or encounter that you had been walking and talking with Jesus? Example, yesterday, Chris Balzer said, when I see my father and experienced him, it was as if... I had encountered Jesus. But my question for you at your table groups, I would like you to talk. What do you think Jesus may have said? And this is all speculation, but I want you to work from your memory and there's no wrong answers. Well, I guess there's no... I'm not, this isn't a test to grade you up and down, but what comes to your memory? What are the stories of people that you talked with? Marvin and I talked about encountering our friend Lou. It was as if we were serving Jesus walking with a homeless person. Those types of things. So spend some time, and, and I've given Tony these, these questions as well. Sit around your tables, and then we're going to finish this sermon this morning as a group. And I'm going to ask each group, somebody sort of take notes if you'd like to, or work from memory, and give us a report. What did you discuss? What did you learn? What do you think people talked about? Have fun. And we'll pick up the second part of the sermon in just a little while. I'll give you about five, ten minutes. Okay. When I think about this scripture, this story, these brothers and Jesus slowed down. You can't talk and have a conversation and walk seven miles high speed. Got to slow down and just go at a nice pace and have this great conversation. So how long did that seven miles take? I remember one day I walked with a Maasai friend from the bus junction out at the hard road, which was about 30 kilometers, which is what, 12 miles or so? Maybe more than that. 15, 16 miles. And that guy could walk. And there was no way I was going to talk while he was walking. I mean, it was... <laughs> so many hours later, I got home. Our car was broken. But these guys were walking, and as they walked, their energy, their whole being, I liked the physiological part that you picked out on this, uh, Margaret. There... Jesus played with them, but he wanted them to understand the psychological impact of teaching, and just fantastic. And the scriptures, starting back at the beginning with the temptation, Sharon, each one of us have begun to think, well, it was possibly that, or I think it might have been that, and it may have been all of that. 
And yet the word of God is hidden in our hearts. And this week as you walk, as we are carrying many things, we're on our own road to Emmaus, whether it's sickness, whether it's being in a wheelchair and not wanting to be in rehab, whether it's being in pain, whether it's walking with family members who are struggling, whether there's job issues, whether the list goes on. We find ourselves walking through life. Slow down. Pay attention to the words of Jesus and to the scriptures that come alive as you walk this journey. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the way your word is so hidden in our hearts as a group. May you continue to reveal yourself in our conversations, in the scriptures, in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Join with us as we sing uh, two songs of response. Imagine yourself on the road to Emmaus with Jesus there with you. And think about your journey, your Emmaus road, where you're at right now, today. What would Jesus be telling you? What would he say to you? What would you say to him? So as we sing and we're coming out of Easter, we're longing for a new realization of what happened this past week as we looked at Easter death, resurrection. Our death, our, our revival, our longing for resurrection in our lives, what are those things? And so as we sing, reflect on your life and your journey that you are on right now.
one